All right, so one of the big moments, the moment for me coming out of FDU Orlando was the story of Von Gittin Jr. And it started at the last lap of practice. He goes out there, smashes into the wall, rides it all the way around, comes to a stop. The dust settles, the car is in pieces. The whole front end is destroyed. Wheels are not even on the car. It looks like he is out. You see him wiping sweat off his forehead. We can't even lift the car off the ground because it's slammed to the ground. We have to basically fork the car out of the track to get on with the top 32. It looked like that car was done for the day. Tires were, wheels were hanging off. They got it back to the pits. They fixed it. Didn't have all the body panels on it, but it looked like a Mad Max car out on, on the track against Dean Carney. And you have to wonder about the mentality, the thought process of the driver. They've just crashed, they've found the limit, they went beyond the limit. Now they're in competition. Does that give them more of a drive? Does it make them push harder because they know where that limit is? Or is it because the car's crashed and he thinks, I've already damaged it enough, what's if, you know, what's, how bad can it be if I crash it again? The weekend was going great. You know, myself and Chelsea were both coming into these effectively brand new cars that we brought to Formula Drift this year uh, until it wasn't going great. When I smashed into the wall about 18 minutes uh, before I had to battle Dean Carney in the top 32. Um, I just was, you know, I was in practice and just inching up to the wall and I inched up about three inches too far, tried to drive the car off and it just sucked me in. And then Ryan Literal, who was behind me, he tried to get away, but he ended up basically tail slapping my front right wheel and threw me back into the wall. And man, I, we came down off the bank and the car just kind of rolled to a stop and I got out. I mean, the front left was completely gone. All the suspension, everything just missing. The right tie rod, sway bar links, I mean, the wheel, everything was just hurt. And, uh, you know, it called the guys. The guys came out and, uh, you know, started assessing the damage. Everyone in the pits was getting prepared. And um, thank you to my amazing crew and their preparation and practice, you know, changing parts in very quick times back at the shop at the RTR lab in Charlotte. Rarely do you get to see them, their perfectly orchestrated process of getting the car back together. And it was uh, epic to witness. He stuffed it pretty good. I actually felt really bad because I thought it was my advice. Turns out it wasn't my advice that caused him to crash. At least he says it wasn't. And uh, yeah, like three corners of the car were blown off and, it, and uh, the crew was able to fix it in about 15 minutes. You know, the time of one battle and then a five minute call. And we only even used four minutes of it. So it was all hands on deck. I tried to do as much as I could, but these guys had the thing together and running immediately. And uh, Vaughn went out there and won his next battle with a car that had half the body panels on it. So it was pretty awesome. There he is at the line. Sans hood, the car doesn't look great, but it's functional and it's running, it's safe. He goes out there and he beats one of the top drivers in the series right now, Dean Carney, with a car that looked like it came out of Mad Max, okay? <laughs> After that, his team really buttons down, gets the car back to the highest performance that they can out of the vehicle, and he makes his way all the way to the final four. That story, the succession of events that happened, everything that was going on behind the scenes with the team putting together back the car was just an incredible journey for everybody to, to follow. For a team to get back into competition after an on-track wreck is, is quite a feat. Um, but for them to come back and win their battle is even bigger of a feat. For him to be focused to win that battle is quite amazing. You know, we went out there in the top 32 looking like a Frankenstein. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we put it down, you know, it was 60% of a car, literally the setup was all whack. I had like two inches of toe out. It was a very weird car to drive, but uh, we were able to make it work, move on, and then uh, continue fighting into the, the, the final four. Just missed making it to the finals, you know, a couple one more times with Osbo, a couple one more times with Odie. The judges were making me work for it, but, uh, you know, I guess I wouldn't have it any other way. His driving through the rest of that event was driving that we haven't seen from Vaughn. So it's really impressive to see him progress. And I think he's taking a lot of Chelsea's driving skills and driving techniques and adapting them to his. So he's uh, driving in a way that we haven't seen Vaughn drive in previous seasons, which is really fun to see. Thank <laughs> you.